How long do I have to be here? When can I leave? When is this appropriate? Internally, that's what's going on. Externally, I'm like, of course I can bake a pie with you. That would be so fun. <laughs> DID Hatchery and today I want to talk about the defense mechanism of fawning. I feel like fawn is very underappreciated and underrepresented in psychiatric literature. It's it's no it's not you know it's acknowledged. Fight, flight, fawn, freeze are our four defense mechanisms, but I don't see many people focus on it in treatment and currently I fawn to somebody in my life and I want to discuss it because I want people to understand what this response feels like from the inside out. It may not be what you think. Okay, so fawning is like a pathological need to people please. When you, it's, it's a defense mechanism, you think it's basically your mind ingratiating itself to its threat in order to survive. So you can freeze, right? You can play dead, you can run, you can fight, or you can fawn and ingratiate yourself in order to survive. So I currently fawn to somebody. And what you have to understand about fawning is if the person you're fawning to has never abused you, then it is not their fault that you're fawning to them. Now, I know a lot of people don't wanna hear that, okay? <laughs> because I have a lot of feelings related to the person that I fawn to, but it's not their fault. They've never abused me. The problem is, is they have certain traits that remind parts of me of an abuser from childhood. And these traits trigger parts of me that are not in the present, okay? I have internal alters. I have alters that don't surface. I have alters that do surface, but are currently stuck in trauma loops from different times. So they don't really know where we are. They don't know that I'm 45 and that I'm in California and that whatever, you know? <clears throat> All they know is they're still living through their trauma. So let's say me as a fronter who knows it's the present day, I am encounter a trigger. That trigger causes me to fawn my neurological, my sympathetic nervous system reacts and turns on the fawning because fawning is not something you can control, okay? Not at the level that I fawn. It is a conditioned response from my childhood and it has become pathological. For me to stop fawning, I require professional help. I can't choose to stop. I can't think my way out of it. I can't change my mind about it. I don't have a choice right now, but through therapy, maybe one day I will be able to break my pathological fawning. And so until I started experiencing the fawn response now, you know, in the present day, I didn't really think much about it. The problem with fawning is that you will sacrifice everything for the person you're fawning to. You will sacrifice your health, your feelings, your morals, your everything you believe in. You will sacrifice that in order to fawn and save your life because that's what your brain is doing. Your brain is saying, you must do this to survive. This is life or death. This is not just fun and games. And so because of my pathological fawning to this person, it has prevented me from getting the help I've needed. A few weeks back when I went to the hospital, that took me months, literal months of therapy to work up the courage to mention to the person I fawned to that I might need to go in for a little treatment just to, you know, maybe get a little extra help. I never presented it the way it really was. I, I really, I just, I tried to make it as normal sounding as possible. 
I got a very bad reaction. Then the ER situation happened, which added on to that very, very bad reaction and made it so much worse. And, you know, I planned on getting treatment again at another facility, but I still, I can't because I'm still fawning to the person and I'm terrified of trying to mention that to them. It is not their fault. Remember, it is not the fault of the person you're fawning to if this person has never abused you. It's just that this person to certain altars, they, my altars, certain altars can't tell the difference between this person and my childhood abuser. They think it's the same person. Um, other altars absolutely know this is a different person and we're in a different time in a different place. But the effect of other parts the influence, the passive influence of other parts and their anxieties, plus my neurological system, makes it impossible. I will literally do anything for the person I fawn to. It doesn't matter if I, let's say I had COVID, I, I thought I was gonna die and I felt terrible emotionally, I thought I was gonna have a nervous breakdown. If that person asked me to run 10 miles at 3 a.m., I would do it with a smile on my face. That's how sick and pathological my fawning is. I have done things that internally I have felt tortured doing and I will continue to do them because I don't know how to break my fawn response. It, it's very painful because fawning is not like borderline personality disorder where you have like a favorite person. You don't fawn to your favorite person. You fawn to threats. So anytime I'm around the person I fawn to, I'm always in fight or flight. I'm extremely hypervigilant. Internally, I'm constantly dying. Um, it has nothing to do with that person. They're not doing anything to me. It's all about my past abuse. So inside, I'm panicking. I'm, I'm, I can't handle it. Oh God, what if they say this? What if they do that? What if I, how long do I have to be here? When can I leave? When is it appropriate? Internally, that's what's going on. Externally, I'm like, of course I can bake a pie with you. That would be so fun. Let's bake a pie. Let's bake five pies. <laughs> That's what I look like on the outside while inside I'm like, oh God, if I have to spend one more minute here, I'm gonna break down. I'm gonna fall down on the floor and start crying and never get up again. My head might explode. I don't know, maybe blood will shoot out of my eyes. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I can't stay here one minute longer. And then outside I'm like, yeah, let me get the flour for you. Of course, I'll sift it. <laughs> that's fawning and it's a uh, it's a uh, difficult <laughs> to live with because it also causes the person who's fawning to be angry and resentful and it causes lots of flashbacks <laughs> emotion i get a lot of emotional flashbacks where i stop knowing like i said i can stop knowing that this person is not the person from my past for brief periods I can start being like, no, it's her, it's her, it's her. You know, it's my, by her, I mean my abuser from my past. Um, and I will believe it for short periods of time until, I don't know, until another part of me comes along and is like, what you're thinking is not rational right now. You are not thinking properly. Your thinking is in the past. But it doesn't mean I can stop fawning. And I think it's like, it's a very unique torture. Every trauma response has its individual tortures right but the difference between fawning fight flight freeze is fight flight and freeze usually only involve you okay i mean fight yes you're fighting somebody but it's different from fawning because at least you can get your anger out okay fawning is like being trapped in an exoskeleton and that exoskeleton is your puppet master and it works your mouth and your face and your body and it makes you do everything while inside you're thinking, I, I can't cope with any more of this. I, I literally can't cope with one more minute of this. I think my bones are gonna dissolve or something because this is not natural, I cannot do this. And then you're just smiling, smiling, smiling. It's, it's like a nightmare of, uh, I can't think of the word now, ugh when the outside doesn't match the inside. I can't really think of the word, but you know. It's a response I currently deal with on a daily basis. And it's very hard 
it's very hard. And I, I feel like if I talk about it much longer, I could very possibly cry. So I don't know if I wanna continue talking about it right now, but uh, for all of you out there who are fawning uncontrollably, you are not alone. Um, there are ways to break fawning. Um, usually if it's pathological, you'll need professional help breaking the, this habit. Well, it's not just a habit, it's a conditioned response that's pathological. Um, I forgot the things that I was gonna list uh, ways to break fawning. I researched it and I forgot it. So I apologize for this incomplete video with no solution. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I can't remember everything. I just can't. I apologize. <laughs> but I just hope that people who suffer from fawning, because it is suffering, it's, it's very much suffering to people please to your trigger constantly, okay? I, I see you, I'm with you, and my cat is here making noises, so I better get going because he's gonna start scratching the door any minute. I love you guys, have a good one.